we really have to stay on our toes to see what the market's doing, what different carriers like and don't like. And some of it gets really crazy. Like this carrier will, they will ensure a 1970s build with aluminum wiring as long as it's remediated, but it has to have a fire sprinkler system. It's like, okay, so you have to remember all these little things that they like. and uh, But it can't be too big, but it also can't be too small. And it can't be too close to the coast, but it can be this far and all these things. So we we have a, a running kind of guide that we kind of use to, to know where to go. And we're always open to finding different markets, finding different ways to do things. The good thing about us as brokers is we have the ability to go out to, to multiple carriers. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Sam Rust. Joining us today is JT Lynch, who's a commercial insurance broker with Rami King Insurance. JT, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. So there's a little bit of backstory here, but I know that Old Capital down in DFW put on a, a basketball tournament here recently. Let's see, Hoops for Homelessness. And I saw some pictures of your firm putting together a team. I'm curious, yeah. did you participate in that? I did. I did participate. And uh, one of those pictures you see with the old capital backdrop is right after I tore my Achilles tendon in that tournament. It was oh. in our last game in the last half, too. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you really left it all out on the court. I guess so. Yeah, I did. It was I funny. Saw that. Um, Oh, go ahead. It, when it happened, you know, I felt it snap and I, it felt like someone landed on the back of my leg. Uh, but then when there's no one around and I just collapse, you know, uh, then I, I knew exactly what happened. And I was telling everyone, they're like, no, no, you, you just sprained your ankle. It's like, no, like it's not there. You can feel it. It's gone, you know? And they're like, well, let me get you an ice pack. It's like, uh, okay, it's not going to do anything. Like my Achilles is <laughs> it done. So it was pretty funny. Oh my gosh. Um, well, I did see that picture. I was like, oh, yeah. that didn't look good. Um, yeah. But here we are talking just a couple of days later. So the real important question that we're all wondering is, did you guys win? We didn't win. And actually on that play, they called me for a travel too, because I fell down with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had to, had to you rub it in a little bit even more. Oh but, uh, my goodness. I'm going to have to talk yeah. to James. Oh, that's yeah, just we, uh, But it was a great time. Great turnout. Um, I wish that I could have stayed longer um, and network, been able to network with everybody. But um, awesome event. SMU campus is amazing. I don't, I don't know the last time I went back there, but it, it's beautiful and, and the event was great. So I hope that they keep doing it. I don't know how much I can attend next time, but you know, <laughs> my wife said, "Well, your goal now is to get back so you can be there next season, right?" Like, we'll, see. I don't know. <laughs> we'll check back with you, JT, in about three months and see how rehab yeah. is going. Yeah, I've heard exactly. that that can be somewhat grueling for Achilles tendons. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest problem with it. We we're kind of speaking off air. The pain surprisingly isn't isn't really as bad as you would think, but the comeback, the, the rehab process is pretty strenuous. So probably not walking and not playing basketball for sure for about a year. So, well, we'll uh, ride the pine until next year and we'll see. Yeah. Maybe you'll come back as a coach or a ref or something. Yeah, exactly. I'm out for the season now, but you never know. Yeah. <laughs> if the Mavericks call, who can say no, right? Hey, exactly. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you ended up in commercial insurance. You know, there's some folks that are born into that business. It doesn't appear that you would fall into that category. So walk us through a little bit of your career path to end up at Rami King. Sure. So I went to school at Texas Tech and I was an exercise and sports science major. I did it because I've, I've been around sports my whole life. And that seemed like the logical step to do. But then afterwards, in a, in a real career field, you really need to go get your master's. I was thinking about physical therapy and things like that. Uh, but I graduated in 2008. The economy wasn't good. And so I decided, you know what, I, I don't want to spend more time and have more debt in college. Let me, let me go see what I can find. And then I can always come back. Right. And I found a, a job in sales, like you mentioned at True Green. Never thought I would be good at sales at all. It's just kind of a filler position, you know, to find my next thing. But I was good at it. And I just learned basics kind of in a call center. And then I ended up uh, managing a sales team uh, door to door, actually, in, in Dallas and in Houston. So if you can sell something door to door, you can do anything, especially in Texas during the summer. So that it's one of those jobs where, man, this this kind of sucks. I don't want to do it. But then it, it, it hardens you for everything else going forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. That eventually, I was with a company called IGS Energy um, at the time, and they ended up pulling all their branches out of Texas. 
And so I'm not left going, well, now what do I do? Making good money, doing well, uh, doing door to door with my sales teams. But the problem is, is you have to be there when uh, people are home, right? And that's usually on weekends or later at night. My son was probably four at the time. And I'm just thinking, you know, do I want to do this the rest of my life and you know, be away from him forever? Probably not. This is probably a good time to make a career change. And so I did. My neighbor actually was um, working at Liberty Mutual and uh, personal lines. And so I got a job there. Liberty Mutual is great. I had a lot of uh, learning there. I just didn't like the... It, it seemed like you, you would you would help somebody and then you're on to the next right away. There, there's no relationship building at all. And I really didn't like that. And so I just happened to go to a networking event and uh, my, my future boss sat down right next to him. And usually at those events, you try to stay away from guys in your, your own industry, right? But he happened to sit next to me and we started talking and... Um, he said, you know what? We've got an open position. I think you'd really like commercial. And uh, here I am. So I've learned that all the bad things that you think of a job or all the struggles that you might have, it's, it's really, it's, it doesn't have to be forever. And just use those as strengths, you know, use those as encouragement and take from everything you can to, to go on to the next. And if any if anything ever seems hard, I tore my Achilles tendon and I'm working from home talking to you, right? Nothing is as hard as walking out in Texas, going door to door. So you kind of put everything in perspective. And so I wouldn't change anything for the world. Uh, I, I do wish I would have gotten into this a little bit sooner, but uh, definitely my path has helped mold me to who I am today. Yeah. I mean, so many people in real estate are in sales. Just what mm -hmm. are you slinging? It, it, the product might be a little bit different, but the networking component of it is the same. But going door to door, rejection rate, fairly high, I would imagine. Yeah. Yes. How did you get past the mental block of that? I, I've been in sales as well for 12 years. And that's the hardest thing. When you're cold calling, even with established relationships, that rejection can be difficult. But when you're just door to door, as you said, in the hot Texas summer, it takes a little bit of intestinal fortitude to overcome that. Did you have any tips that you could share with us on, on how you yeah. approached it? Yeah, you're definitely right. The yes rate is it's not good, right? But <laughs> what you do is you just look at it from a number standpoint, right? If I knock 100 doors a day, I'm going to get at least one or two sales. So you just know that, right? And then the more you do it, the better you're going to be. And so you really look at it as this is a no, but it's my 30th no. I've got you know 70 more to go before I get another yes. So it's once you kind of look at it from that standpoint and just know that my numbers are this solid, I know that I can get a sale out of every 100 doors. So then just keep pushing to the next. You're, that one no is closer to your next yes, right? And then I would start doing things instead of setting a goal for a sale, I set a goal for let me let me have a great conversation with somebody. Even if I don't make a sale, at least they weren't cussing me out and you know throwing me off the lawn or something. At least I had a great conversation. And interesting enough, when you're not being too pushy and when you're just going up and talking to somebody about their U.S. Marine flag flying or you know saying thanks to them and, and just having a conversation with them later on, you'll see them. Uh, you know when you're walking the other side of the street, and a lot of times they'll tell you to come back or they told their friends. So try to strive for. Great conversations, relationship building. You may not get the sale right then. You may not ever get the sale, but you'll have a more pleasant day. And it, it seems to come around uh, in your favor for sure. So just don't get frustrated. Stick to the process and just keep going. That, that no is just one step closer to the yes. Are you about to start a podcast or producing a podcast and tired of doing the editing yourself? We have produced over 1,000 daily shows and the production team that I've created, they're now available to produce shows for you as well. We can do as little or as much as you need from finding and communicating with guests, preparing introductions, to editing the audio and video. You will sound better, have a more professional presence, and be able to spend your time doing other valuable tasks on your business. Let me know you're interested by emailing me directly at whitney at lifebridgecapital.com. Uh, I think that's really important. And a lot of that can translate over to whether it's underwriting deals. Oh, yeah. Just, like, I mean, the ratios are probably pretty similar these days. The number of deals sure. you have to underwrite before you get to a yes. And then even with passive investors. Um, and you, I think what you said about not being pushy and just really seeking to be somebody that people enjoy being around is really important and genuinely pursuing that, not just 
putting it on like a coat so that you can appear attractive, making that part of who you are, not being overly pushy uh, right. is, is really key to many aspects of what we do in real estate. It definitely. And I'm, and I'm really blessed. You know, we're family owned and operated company. My boss is great. Um, and he understands that it, it is a relationship game. And some of my best stories are um, when we, when we weren't able to make the sale. So maybe for whatever reason, this property, maybe there's just too much rehab going on and the markets we have just won't insure it, right? There's just too much there. You've got to go in and get uh, things fixed first before our markets are willing to look at it. And so some of the best stories are, hey, I can't help you on this one, but I know someone else that can call, that you call and I'll introduce you and they can help you out. Once you get everything fixed, then give me a call and I'll help you. And so it's funny, you know, I, I, I didn't make the sale. You'd think, like, oh man, this is this is terrible. But that that I, I get so much thanks and appreciation from that and referrals from that and just being open and honest. It makes me feel better. And in the end, it it it, it helps everybody. And I've worked in environments before where it's just sell, 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 you know, hard sell no matter what. And and that's that's just not me. I'm I'm here for the long game, right? I'm here for building relationships, um, not just getting this sale, but getting your your other properties as well, right? And you can only do that when you have a good relationship with everybody. And so that's, I'm fortunate that I'm in an area that they'll let me do that. Yeah, moving from the the transactional sale to the more consultative sale, the longer relationship cycle, I I greatly enjoyed that as well. It's such a different feel when you know, hey, I'm going to be working with this person if I nurture this relationship well for 5, 10, 20 years versus, hey, I, I sold you a whole life policy and we may never speak sure. again. So exactly. I, I do have to ask before we move off of the true green, how many times did you have a gun pulled on you? Cause you're going door to door in Texas. It never happened to me, but it did happen to somebody in my sales team in Houston once. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So that was uh, not cool. Um, I, I think he may have quit the next day, which I don't blame him, but yeah, it's uh, it's a scary thing. We would do as much as we could to be safe. We'd always go out in groups. We'd always, you know, leave before it got dark and things like that. But um, yep. yeah, people people are weird about their houses. You never know who's on the other side of the door. You make sure to knock and step back so you're unthreatening and things like that. So there's there's definitely an art to it. But yeah, it it can be scary out there. But I'll tell you what, the uh, most successful door to door sales reps I've had um, are women, and and you'd think. Oh, they're they're the most scared to go out and do anything. But no, if they have the right attitude, they're so unthreatening at the door that most people will open and and carry on a conversation with them. Whereas, uh, big scary dude, maybe they won't even open the door, right? So yeah. it, it's all on your mindset and attitude. We also know the neighborhoods to kind of stay away from. I mean, the 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 neighborhoods, the, the bad neighborhoods, they're not going to buy True Green service anyway. So why? <laughs> yeah. <you know>? So <laughs> we're, we're going into areas where people like a well manicured yard, and most of them are pretty respectful. So yeah, they appreciate your service. Well, that was a, a fun aside, but commercial insurance. I want you to tell me that insurance rates are going down nationwide. That it, it's it's an amazing story running counter to inflation. Can you verify this rumor, JT? I cannot verify that rumor. Oh, man. It's interesting. There's been kind of a shift, especially in Texas and, and South Texas near Houston uh, this year, that uh, things have gotten more challenging for sure. And it all comes down to losses, right? So these carriers will insure properties. If they take enough losses, they, they literally can't afford to insure these properties anymore because they're, they're paying out too many in claims, right? And so a lot of them, how do they recoup that? They increase premiums. Maybe they increase the deductible percents. And then some of them say, you know, we, we can't do it anymore. We're not insuring 1970s to 1980s in Houston, Texas anymore, right? So they, they kind of, I guess, make their appetite a little bit smaller. Uh, they'll do they'll do things you know 2018 and newer, but beyond this line at this highway, they don't go below that. And so, we really have to stay on our toes to see what the market's doing, what different carriers like and don't like. And some of it gets really crazy. Like this carrier will they will insure a 1970s build with aluminum wiring as long as it's remediated, but it has to have a fire sprinkler system. It's like okay, yes, so you have to yeah. remember all these little things that they like, and uh, but it can't be too big, but it also can't be too small, and it can't be too close to the coast, but it can be this far, and all these things. So we we have a a running kind of guide 
that we kind of use to, to know where to go. And we're always open to finding different markets, finding different ways to do things. The good thing about us as brokers is we have the ability to go out to, to multiple carriers and we can even mix and match some coverages. So one carrier might be great with property. Another one might be great with general liability. Another one's good with a uh, umbrella. One carrier on property side may not offer wind and hail coverage. Well, let's go to another carrier that will offer it, right? And so sometimes you get a policy and there's multiple carriers on it because they're all insuring little sections of it, kind of protecting themselves. Then at the end of the day, as long as the policy works and the lender approves it, it doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll get as creative as possible to make it work. Yeah. Do you see broadly folks driving deductibles higher and assuming a little bit more risk to try to drive insurance costs down or driving deductibles down to lower their overall risk in the event of an actual claim? It's a good question. Most of the time, I'll see people um, willing to take a, a higher deductible just to get that premium down. Uh, in Texas, the 2% wind hail deductible is that standard. You're, you're not seeing too many 1%. And as you get closer to the coast, it's even higher. Or they'll have a separate deductible for a named storm even. So it, most people are trying to save as much as they can so they can you know, make sure that this investment works. I will say that people are be more strategic about it as well. So if you've got a roof that's 10 years old in Texas, well, maybe I do a deductible buy down to the 1% now because I know that that next hailstorm that's going to come through, which we had one last night, there, there's hailstorms. It's, it's going to happen, right? The next one that comes through could be that next claim, right? And so if you've got an older roof, maybe you get the deductible buy down so that you can afford that new roof. But if you got one that's uh, one or two years old, maybe you take that risk and let it ride for a few years so the roof gets older. So it really depends on the property, but also depends on the person. I've seen owners that 5% wind hail. And at, and at that point, you know, you're kind of self-insuring. I've seen some owners not even have a deductible. Now, well, I don't want wind and hail coverage. I'll, I'll take care of that myself. You know, So everybody's risk tolerance is different. I and mean, it's kind of challenging for us, actually, because we want to get you the best benefit but you might say, no, I want the best premium possible. I don't care about all that other stuff. I just want the best premium. You're driving towards We, we kind of need to know that going forward to be able to get you your best option, not necessarily the best option that we think, if that makes sense. No, it makes total sense. You know, I live in Colorado. We own properties across the Rockies. So named storms aren't that big of a deal. But a lot of listeners to this show are around the Gulf Coast, your Floridas, yeah. your Carolinas, obviously a lot of folks in Texas. You had mentioned that some people are starting to have carve outs for named storms. Is there special rider policies that you can put on that are only triggered by named storms? Yeah. Like disaster and, style insurance? Yeah, there's there's a few ways to do it. And, and like I said, some some carriers, they will not cover a named storm. So then you go find someone else that will, and they're willing to take on that risk at a 3% named storm deductible. And, and for your listeners, named storm is exactly that. If the storm comes through and it has a name, there it is. It's a named storm deductible. So basically what that means is a tropical depression. If it gets big enough to have a name uh, like a hurricane, then that would be a named storm. Yep. So that, that doesn't apply to tornadoes or anything like that. It's just bigger storms that are named. So They're somewhat predictable. And you watch on your news channel for 10 days before they actually make landfall. Yeah. Well, and what's really interesting is this time of year, Cares are even tighter near the coast because this is hurricane season. So what they're afraid is, I'm going to write this property right now, and a hurricane is going to come through next week, and now all of a sudden I, I've lost, you know, all of this. So they actually kind of wait around sometimes, especially if there's a hurricane kind of floating off the Gulf. They'll wait around. They'll go, we'll write it after this storm comes through, and then they'll write it. So it's it's really challenging, especially you got closing dates and all this. Yeah. Trying to figure out the best option, but uh, during hurricane season, it makes it a little tougher. As you get farther into the summer, that's less of a problem. But yeah, right now it's a little challenging. They, they, they're watching the storms very close. Man, I hadn't even considered that, but that would be something as an insurance company to see, you know, Charlie coming through. Oh yeah. And all of a sudden, like oh, we're supposed to close, we're just not going to write it for forty eight hours, and we're going to wait yeah. and see. Like that could leave a a, a buyer in a pinch. Sure, sure. And it's it's tough. So if you're looking at coastal properties, keep that in mind that hurricane season, you may need to uh, have a couple extensions just because of that. If there's a storm, you know, waiting off the coast, then 
yeah, you're probably going to have to wait. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, what's one way that you've improved your business recently, JT, that we might be able to apply on our side of the fence? It's kind of funny. I tell everybody this, but but COVID actually really helped my business. And the reason is, is there's there's enough networking events in DFW that you could go to one every night, probably. And you go in person. And that's what we used to do. But since COVID, no one was getting out. And so then what happened, right? Zoom is all the rage and everyone has a Zoom. And that allowed me to network with folks all over the United States. And we're licensed everywhere, not just Texas. So I'm able to meet people in New York that are buying a property in North Carolina um, and so on. And, and I wouldn't have done that unless people were more open to all these Zoom meetings. Um, and from there, it's just referrals like crazy. It's it's building relationships with people, and giving them a shout out on Facebook when they uh, when they close something or LinkedIn and just the network. Um, there's there's a lot of investors out there, but it really does feel like a small family. And as long as you're doing them right, your name will get out, you'll get the good referrals, and you can help more and more people. So that, that, that's the biggest thing is I when I network now, I don't necess- I don't even start the conversation off telling them what I do. I, I tell them who I know that can help them get their deals done, right? Who I can um, refer you to. Uh, do you need an attorney? Do you need a CPA? Do you need other investors to team up with? Where, where are you looking at? Uh, Maybe, maybe you need more help, a bigger team to take down a bigger deal, right? And so my whole thing is let's let's group all these people together. And then, oh, by the way, I'd, I'd be happy to help with your insurance, right? And I think the more honest you are about that approach and just the true relationship building, the better it's going to be. And people can see the, the BS, right? And so just, just be open and honest, try to help them, and um, it'll come back tenfold for sure. That's fantastic. Well, JT, thanks for joining us today. If folks want to reach out to you, um, they can hit you up at your email, jtlynch at ramyking.com or look him up on LinkedIn. He's got a profile there as well. But uh, thanks for your time, JT. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you to our listeners for joining another episode of the Daily Real Estate Syndication Show. I'm your host, Sam Rust, signing off. Thank you for being a loyal listener of the show. Please subscribe and share it with your friends. We want to help you become the passive investor you've always wanted to become, but also the operator you've always wanted to become. We want to be the number one resource for your real estate investing journey. But go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing in real estate today.